Hello and welcome to a tutorial for the Ink Stitch program, which is an extension on Inkscape. Uh, this is an open source program that is great for digital art and vectoring, and the extension Ink Stitch can be downloaded from Inkscape for free online, again, open source. And the Ink Stitch is primarily for embroidery. It's very easy to use and has quite a few really awesome features. So let's get into it. First off, you're going to want to make sure that Inkscape, of course, is downloaded on your computer, following the steps on the website to add the extension of Ink Stitch. You can find it all on the website. When you first open up Inkscape, you're going to get this basic uh, look here. And you can kind of edit this to your liking. Here's the Ink Stitch extension where you can find it in, in the extensions. This is all of your embroidery stuffs that you're going to need. You kind of look through that. Some of it I use more than others. You don't need everything usually. So the first thing I want to do is to make sure I save this accordingly. And I would highly recommend for any graphic designers of any type to always save your files and name them properly so you can find them later. It can get a little bit frustrating if you don't. So this one we're just gonna ink stitch basic tutorial, whatever. It's not it's not complicated. It was a very quick, very easy tutorial. Okay, so over here is your document properties. You can change your units to inches or millimeters or whatever else you would like. I prefer inches myself. Sometimes it changes it back though. Here you can change your workspace uh, width and height. Usually I work with about four to five inches of space on average for my embroidery machine. You can also get rid of the checkered background and you can change the color to any color you like. You have this whole wheel of colors, so any color that you want to see when you're working. I personally prefer the dark gray. It's just easy on the eyes. Okay, once you have that all set, good to go. So we go over to layers. Now the first layer, usually what you're going to want to use this for is your sketch or image or clip art or whatever it is that you're trying to digitize. So for today, we're just going to do an image. I have a basic clip art of an onk symbol that I'm going to use. So we're going to name that image one. And you can, if you would like to, you can use the pencil tool and you can actually draw directly in Inkscape. It is already an art program, but for today, we are not going to mess around with that. We're just going to do a basic, basic symbol. Okay. So you're going to want to go into file, import, and then find the file that you want to import and go through your files, whatever it is, whatever image, sketch, etc., that you'd like to digitize. Okay, so once you have it, you just open. Uh, here's the basic setup. I haven't changed that once and it just imports properly. So, okay, I'll grab it with the move tool. And I like to scale the image to approximately the size it's going to embroider as just to not be messing around with the resizing later if I don't have to, because I can change some of the nodes and make the process a little bit more difficult sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. Okay, so lock that layer and turn down the opacity and add a new layer. This one is going to be the onk fill. Now, when it comes to the layers, the first layer that you create is gonna be the first thing that your embroidery machine does, and then going up the line, you know, to the last. Okay, so for the onk fill, the first thing we're gonna do, using this bezier, bezier, however you pronounce that, we're gonna do a classic basic uh, stitch. This one is really cool because you can do all these nodes and it's very specific. Um, if you use the pencil tool, it ends up putting a lot of nodes in there. But if you use the Bezier, it puts the nodes you want into it. And it's just going to be a complex fill this time. Or you can do the whole of the upper shape if you want. I like to do it this way just for symmetry because sometimes it's hard to get the round shapes in perfect symmetry, but you can also run the risk of getting a pretty bad seam. So that's kind of a preference. It's up to you. There are ways around it, but again, we're just going to do this really quick, really basic. So you lay down to your nodes and you adjust the lines by just holding the lines okay, with your right mouse. You can also click the nodes and you get these little arms that come off of it, which also can move the lines. I usually prefer to just use the lines though. Okay, so again, adjust to your liking. 
And when you lay down these nodes, I, I forgot to add this, but when you lay down those nodes, you press enter at the end unless you combine the shape. And if you combine the shape with the last node, then you don't have to do that. So to get rid of that little bump real quick, I'm going to add two more nodes around it, delete it, and it's going to auto smooth. See? All gone. So next we're going to grab this. We're going to go over to fill and stroke. And we're going to get rid of the stroke because that's technically going to read as the outline in the embroidery. And we don't need that yet. So we're going to go into fill instead, add the fill, pick its color. And this is going to be the basic complex fill that we're going to be embroidering. Okay, so go into edit, copy, paste in place, mirror right here up top. And then using hold control and use your right uh, mouse button and pull it over the side. Holding control keeps it online, so it's really easy. All right, select both of the objects and go to Path, Union. This combines them into one solid object, which can get rid of the seam if you don't want that seam in the middle. Now, you might want to go in, edit some of these nodes again, just to make sure they're smooth. Sometimes when you do this, it gets a little crazy. Like if you look up here, um, that will definitely translate in the stitches as being a little wonky spot up at top that's going to get all bundled together. And we don't want that. So again, just add the nodes on the sides. So that way it doesn't affect the rest of the line. And just go through and delete and edit as you wish. You're also going to want to check the rest of the object to make sure that any other nodes, such as this one down here, which kind of gave it a divot, we don't really want that divot. Although it's not exactly important at this moment because we are actually going to combine this, but just for perfectionist purposes, we're going to edit that as well. Okay, super simple. So the next thing that we are going to do is the rest of the body. A little bit easier doing the complex fill. We only have to add the nodes to each of these points and then edit from there. And since it's such a simple design, it only takes a few seconds. And you can see here, just add it to that last node, automatically creates an actual object. Okay, edit that down real quick. So this right here, it's trying to attach it to a, a node that's in the upper part of the onk. So if you go over here to toggle snapping on and off, okay, it'll stop doing that. I don't like having that on because it kind of interferes with where I want to lay my lines and stuff. Sometimes it's helpful, um, but in this case, it really is not. And we don't need it. Okay, so just again, using the edit tool right there, we want to adjust these lines, get them laying where we want them. And then we go over again, get rid of the stroke, and do the fill. Okay. Now using shift, holding down shift, we are going to uh, grab both objects and go up to path and union. Again, creating one solid object. And go check your nodes again real quick uh, just to make sure. Sometimes you don't have to do this. I usually do it just automatically because a lot of times it'll mess things up, add nodes where I don't want them, change how they're sitting, you know, stuff like that. So we just want to get rid of that. Then you can kind of adjust it how you want it to look. And these, a lot of times these really small nodes can keep your image from uh, properly exporting as an embroidery file. But these little tiny edits that I'm doing honestly never show up in the actual embroidery because they're so small. Okay, up here, got a little note up there. It's not too bad. But down here, do you see how that node looks different? Almost looks tinier. That, that node's essentially layered on top of itself. So we're going to create two nodes around it so it doesn't mess up the line. And we're going to delete that. And we're going to have to delete that a few times. I have no idea why it does that yet, but um, it will cause issues. So just delete it until the thing's gone. That can take a few times, depending. There you go. All gone. Perfect. Okay. So we have our basic onk object, just one whole object. Okay, so next, uh, you can see right there, we no longer need to see the image, so we'll just hide that. Save it real quick. Okay. And then we're going to copy the whole object as one. Okay, copy the whole object as one. Lock that layer and create a new layer for the outline. So we'll do onk outline, okay, add that layer, and then edit paste in place. So it's going to paste the whole onk. We'll get rid of the fill because we don't want it to run twice. That fill will run twice if we don't get rid of it. 
and instead add the stroke. So this should just be an empty stroke by itself. You can change its color and see it automatically added it. It doesn't always do that, but in simple designs, it's really easy. So your stroke style is going to be your width. Uh, most of these settings are where it's supposed to be. It's usually just the width. Um, the dashes kind of differ between a running stitch or an actual like, you know, outline satin type of stitch. Okay, so now go into extensions, ink stitch, visualize and export PDF export. This is going to give you a basic rendering of what your design is going to look like. And it's also going to give you your thread list and thread sequencing, such as colors and whatnot. So all we did with that outline was just the basic auto outline for the stroke style. And you can see that it left holes, uh, especially around the corners. And that's absolutely a no-go. We can't be having that. So we're going to go ahead and go back and fix that. Close out of there. Now grabbing only the outline, make sure everything else is locked. Grabbing only the outline. You can see it's an empty outline. Okay. Go into extensions, ink stitch, satin tools, and convert line to satin. A lot of times this just works automatically without any issues. Sometimes you have to kind of work with it and edit it, but usually that's what you end up with. So go back to extensions, ink stitch, visualize the PDF export again, just so we can check and see how it looks. The computer rendering is very close to how it will look. Um, there's a lot of differences like in color or sometimes even texture, but overall it gives you an idea. So see it filled in all those holes that we had around the outline. And this will also help to maintain the actual thickness of the line. Cause a lot of times just the normal stroke line will come through vastly thinner. Okay. So now we've, we've got that done. Uh, save it real quick, unlock the two layers that we're using right now for all the stitching, okay? Select the whole thing, you want the whole thing, and you can export this in two different ways. You can either do Control Shift S, or you can do File Save As. I normally use Control Shift S because it's just a really quick hotkey. Okay, go down into the save as type and you can pick the file. There's a lot of different embroidery file types. I usually use PES and JEF. And then I'm gonna add to this just so I know which type of file it is, just to make sure. Okay. And then we'll save that. And make sure to give it a second. You can see right there, it's saving as the PES. Once that little thing goes away, once the hourglass is gone, you are good to go. Okay, so the second thing we're going to go over is how to do a satin fill instead of a complex fill, which is a little bit different, um, still very simple, but a little bit different. We don't need the outline this time. We're just going to do the fill for the satin. Okay, so we bring back up our image. We've got the basic satin image, okay, or the uh, onk image. So for this one, we're going to start with two straight up and down lines using the bezier again. And again, you can make this one full loop around object if you wish. So we get the two lines down here, and then we're going to go into the edit uh, mode there, and then just pull and adjust. Now, one thing about doing curves when you're doing the satin stitch is that if you have to add those extra nodes, you are more than likely going to have to do the rungs. If the two lines do not have the exact same amount of nodes, you will need to custom make the rungs, and I'll show you how to do that. And in this case, we will need to for this line, just because I have to add nodes to perfectly adjust it. Something I personally like to do is I like to have the ends of these lines for my satins kind of like pointing towards the side or towards each other. It'll make it easier and, and more fluid when they're joined together. And it also makes the end of the satin stitch a little bit more um, congruent with one another. If the satin stitch ends are too far off of each other, not in line with each other, you'll kind of get this like sort of crazy pointed stitch, which can be useful in more complicated designs. But in this one, we definitely do not want that to happen. So again, just little adjustments, get it how you want it. Make sure your little ends are kind of kicked out and as you know, they don't have to be perfectly lined up with each other, but it definitely helps the more so they are. Okay, so that's pretty much good enough. So the next thing we're going to want to do is, again, bezier, and we're going to start drawing these rungs. So when you do the rungs on the satin, you need to start from the same side for each rung. So we're going to start from the bottom up. So we're going to 1, press Enter to add it when you're done. Okay, and these little rungs, all starting from the outside, pressing Enter when we lay down the second node, 
these are going to dictate the direction in which your satin is stitching. Um, you can add fewer or more if you'd like. I personally recommend about this many just because it gives you a little bit more control. Uh, the less you add, the more the computer makes up for it for you and that can create some errors. Okay. So I'm going to show you real quick what this would look like just by itself, how it would run automatically. So by so to do that, we're going to go ahead and select the whole thing. All right, we're going to go up to Extensions, Ink Stitch, Params. And Params is a fun little tool in here. So first and foremost, without any editing, this is what your, your basic foundation of your satin stitch looks like. Okay, And you'll notice that it won't even let you do the custom satin column at first. Okay, So go ahead and just cancel out of there. Then you're going to want to, uh, making sure you have everything together, combine it. Okay, so it's one full object. And you do that path combine. Then you don't go back into params and ink stitch. And this time you can see it changed it a little bit, but it's still kind of weird. So this time you go over the satin columns and custom satin column, and it should automatically do this beautiful satin run for you. Okay, it looks good. Apply and quit. Okay. And then we'll just do a quick copy, paste in place, mirror to the side. Hold control to drag it straight across that line and line it up how you like. Try to get it kind of close. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but try to get it, you know, lined up nicely. So now you have the whole top as a basic satin stitch. Okay. And again, you can do that as one whole thing. So these bottom ones are going to be a little bit simpler. We only need to make one line because we're not going to need multiple nodes. So create your first line. Again, enter when you get that last one using the editing tool. Okay, and then we're going to just take that one line, edit, copy, paste in place, flip, yep, control and drag it over. And then select both of those lines together, go back to path, combine, and now you've got one basic object. Because they're the exact same amount of nodes, you can just go straight into params and create its satin column automatically without having, usually without having to do any other editing. <clears throat> if you do not like the way that it's running, you can still edit it with rungs, but a lot of times when it's simple like this, you don't have to. So apply and quit, we've got our first one done. Okay, and I'm gonna pause right here to explain something as well. A lot of times in more complex uh, designs, you're going to want to have different fills or different stitch types, different parts of the image as different layers. And the layers are gonna go the bottom one first. So this onk fill will run first on your machine and the outline will run second if it's in there, okay? Inside of each layer, whatever you lay down first will run first. So in this case, what's going to happen is that the onk top is going to run first, this is going to run second, and then this last piece is going to run third. And again, you can separate these into layers. Okay. So for the top one, it's going to be the same thing. We only need one line because they're going to be the same amount of nodes. So create your one line, edit that down to where you want it, and then copy paste in place. Oh, make sure you're on the uh, select tool, not the edit tool. Uh, it doesn't copy and paste properly. So copy, paste in place, and this time we're going to mirror vertically. Okay, Holding control again, we're going to drag that down with the mouse and put it where we want it. Select both the top and bottom line real quick, holding down shift, then combine, extensions, ink stitch, params. <clears throat> And then just go straight into satin columns and boom, make sure it runs okay to your liking. It is looking good to me. Got a nice little bow there in the middle. Okay, so let's turn off this image. We don't need the outline this time, not in particularly. And we're going to select the whole thing here. Okay. Now we can change the stroke paint because the way the Inkscape has it set up, it counts as a stroke paint in Inkscape, but when you go into Ink Stitch, visualize and export PDF, you're gonna see that it is actually a satin fill. So give it a second, and boom, okay. So here you've got your running stitches. We'll take care of that in a second. Let's go to the realistic render. This will show you more what it's gonna look like in real life. So see, you can see the layering, you can see how it's gonna be satin. Okay, let's go back. Now to get rid of those uh, threads there, you have to go into extension, ink stitch commands 
attach commands to selected objects. So make sure they're selected. You got a bunch of commands in here, but you're just using the trim thread after sewing this object for this. Just apply. Most of the time, this automatically works just fine. I usually don't have to edit this in any form. You can if you want to. Okay, ink stitch, visualize, PDF. And you'll see now that all of those extra jump threads are gone. It trims them. Of course, being that your machine is capable of trimming, I know that my uh, smaller at home machine is not capable of auto trimming within a color block. But if your machine is like my larger machine is, then this will make sure it trims for you. Okay. All right, so this is just a very, again, super simple, basic tutorial for the startup of InkStitch. Uh, we will be putting out more tutorials for InkStitch, uh, especially throughout this year. We have plans on more frequently posting both here and to our Patreon at patreonstitches.com slash stitches. You can also send us a message on our official website at zstitches.com and check out some of the work we do. Um, for patrons, we also offer free em embroidered digitizations. Uh, there's a selection on there already, and we do plan to add more. They're just files that you can just download and run on your machines. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for watching.